Big Seance Podcast, Episode 30. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Welcome to the parlor. I'm going to begin this episode with a little story time, okay? I I do this with my kids at school occasionally. They love it. Okay, here we go. We are in the middle of moving. And yesterday, my very nice microphone and stand and a mess of cables and a mixer got bumped and crashed to the ground. And it was kind of in dramatic slow motion, like an 80s basketball movie. You know what I mean? The mic cable broke and I sat in the middle of my dining room wanting to cry, really. But after saying some of my favorite colorful words, I pretty much just sat there and had to center myself. And I had to, you know, um, and then I continued packing. And today I took a deep breath, grabbed a new mic cable, hooked everything back together, and voila, it appears we're back up and running. So if I sound a bit different today, I'm swimming through boxes and recording in my dining room, which is not a parlor, but my previous space was not a parlor either, actually. But uh, through the magic of podcasting, we're in a beautiful parlor in my imaginary Victorian home, not unlike the home in Meet Me in St. Louis, perhaps. Are you picturing it with me? That's where we're sitting. Get comfy. But seriously, I hope that you are having a great drive to work or maybe a nice walk in in what I hope is some pleasant weather for March. Maybe you're sitting down with a cup of coffee. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I want to thank you for listening today. My guest today is Dr. Linda Salvin. If you're from the West Coast of the U.S., you're probably familiar with this psychic medium already. She has had an unbelievable journey that pretty much got started when she survived a commercial airliner crash in 1981. If you were around then, you probably heard about it. I'll let her tell the rest of her amazing story, along with her giving a psychic reading on air, her wicks of wisdom, and some big news. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read you her bio, and I'm excited to get to this today. Dr. Linda Salvin is a 21-year radio host veteran and metaphysician. Dr. Linda was not born with psychic abilities. A series of devastating accidents transformed her life. With each of these experiences, her spiritual connection to the universe and her psychic gifts began to grow. Spiritual awakenings resulting from a plane crash, fire truck, and another near-death experience with the white light caused her to seek out ways to integrate her education and experiences to assist others on a new holistic and metaphysical path. Known as a psychic's psychic, fellow psychics consult her from cities across the United States. Her radio show is a mix of sophisticated self-help advice spiritual counsel, and the wisdom provided by innate gifts. People from all walks of life seek her guidance. CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, celebrities, office clerks, professionals, students, and everyone in between. Dr. Linda wishes to help as many as possible find their path. You will find her witty, personable, warm, entertaining, and accurate. If you don't want to know, don't ask. As a result of her radio show, Dr. Linda created a spiritual candle line, Wicks of Wisdom, to further assist people enhance their lives. She is the doctor 
who, like a prescription for your soul, can tap into your life and shine the light upon the path to accurately guide you on your journey. She has produced a TV commercial on the Wicks of Wisdom, which aired nationally on cable TV. The show will be returning as Dr. Linda is currently being branded for a new psychic and astrology network. She will be heavily visible on radio and TV in the coming months. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Dr. Linda is currently writing her memoirs on becoming the psychic healer that she is today as a result of the traumas that opened her up to God and the universe to help us all. Welcome, Dr. Salvin. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. Thank you, Patrick. It's a pleasure to be here. You have such a unique and amazing story, and and I want to get into some of those events that have changed your life. But first, as your bio states, you weren't born with these extreme psychic gifts. Can you tell us uh, tell us who who is pre psychic abilities, Linda Salvin? I have a master's degree in public health epidemiology. I was a Girl Scout. I was just a normal everyday person. I believe I have intuition or had intuition like everybody else does, but not the ability to read the future, give predictions for people's lives, channel people from the other side or heal people. That's something that all happened after the plane crash in 1981. My education was from the University of Michigan and where I got my master's in 1977. I received a bachelor's in 75. So everything prior to 1981 was just more or less more more cognitive and more uh, academic and more just normal everyday life. And then after the accident where I had an out-of-body experience, everything started to open up around me and uh, the voices began and I became what's known as a walk-in where I had an out-of-body experience. And as a psychic explained to me, one soul left and another entered and whatever entered me was psychic. And I didn't believe that woman until it started really happening. And um, things just kept manifesting in my life on a spiritual level. I ran for 12 years before I embraced it. And once I accepted it, other doors opened. So it's been a long journey and I have helped a lot of people. And it took a long time to accept the psychic part of me. I was embarrassed by it, but I learned to live with it and then, ut- and then ut- and, uh, utilize it to help others. So I'm sure you were a really cool person to hang out with before all this happened, but you must be an absolute hoot to hang out with now with all of your abilities. (laughs) I can just imagine. Well, I do have a sense of humor and sometimes I play with it, but what I have learned through the years is to turn it down so that it doesn't rule me and I'm not in psychic mode all the time. If I go out to dinner, it's not like I'm picking up things for my friends at dinner, but once in a while I'll, I'll get into it or sometimes I'll hear voices regarding somebody else in a restaurant knowing that they're having problems. I can tune in, but I've learned to tune it out. And I just try to be as normal as I can knowing that I have a gift and uh, taming it because otherwise I either get taken advantage of, it's draining, or it's really not appropriate to bring up Mm -hmm. spiritual things to certain people at a certain (laughs) time because they're just not into this stuff. (laughs) Well, how do you turn it off? Because I know different psychics have said, you know, they do it in different ways. Is it easy? Yeah, now it is years later. I mean, I've been doing it over 20 years. So, and actually the uh, impact was over 30 four years ago. So it took me a long time to understand what was happening. The first six years after the plane crash was very loud, very confusing, very scary for me. And it took a long time to integrate and heal from that. And then as I started to feel better and start to get my life together, I had other incidences happen where I had either more accidents or I had emergency surgery. And it was just one trauma after another. So it was hard to catch my breath. But I learned to recognize what was going on in my mind and kind of like cap it so that it didn't rule me anymore. And then I could, I could learn to turn it on and off just by focusing and knowing when I'm reading somebody, I'm in psychic mode. If I'm doing business, I'm in business mode. You know, I've learned how to integrate Mm -hmm. and segregate all of it so that it just wasn't all psychic or all business. But um, like anything else, learning the balance. I can't explain how I turn it off. It's just something that clicks in my mind. Mm -hmm. I read an interview that you gave for a magazine a few years ago, and you described the out-of-body experiences you had and, and what exactly it felt like 
from the time of the plane crash and, and for months after that. Now, now feel free to tell us as much as you want about the whole experience, but I would really love to hear more about, you know, the OBEs that you described in that interview. That was amazing to me. Okay. And what you're referring to here, Patrick, is my out-of-body experience, which is OBE. And the first of three was when I was in a commercial airline plane crash in 1981. It was a Boeing 737. And as we crash landed, first of all, I had a premonition the plane was going to crash about That's an right. hour and a half before it happened. And I didn't know about that because I had never really had a premonition that, that actually came true. I wasn't aware back then. I was on company business and I was with my partner. We were out of town doing some research, uh, doing some testing for an insurance company we worked for. And I said to my partner, I said, doesn't it look like it's going to crack there? And he didn't see what I saw, but I saw the breakage line, the fuelage exhaust settlement line. And an hour and a half later, the plane cracked in half at that exact point when we crashed to avoid collision with another plane taking off on the same runway as we were coming in for a landing. And that's a very scary situation when I came down the ramp and I started running on the plane field. This is at John Wayne Airport in Los, uh, Orange County, California. I uh, felt like I was 50 feet out of my body and I stand five feet eight and a part of me was 50 feet tall. So it was like looking at life like a cyclops where I could see different dimensions. So that lasted for about four to six months before it went away or it integrated or it changed. And um when I had gone to a psychic, actually, a friend of mine said I should go see this psychic because I was so stressed out from the plane crash. And I went to this woman and I walked into her apartment and her back was to me. And without her skipping a beat, I walked in. She goes, oh, you're a walk-in. I said, what's a walk-in? And she said, it's when somebody's close to death, another soul takes over. And she said, whatever entered me was psychic. I said, I'm not psychic. Well, I didn't understand at the time. I was so, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder was really right. rampant. So she gave me a book to read and suggested I read Ruth Montgomery's Strangers Among Us, which talks about walk-ins. And I read that book like a Bible until I understood what had happened to me, and it all made sense on a spiritual level. And uh, that was February of uh, 1981. 1982, while I was healing, I was on my way to UCLA for a job interview when a fire truck lost their gear shift and smashed my car. And I had another out-of-body experience watching this, 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 this hose truck, this massive truck roll into my car, and I'm honking and honking, and then they smashed the car. But as the impact began, I left my body even though I was holding onto the wheel with a lot of tension, you know, because your body freezes when, you, when you're in fear. Mm -hmm. So I uh, sat there, and then the captain of the fire truck got out and came over to my car, and I was already crying and laughing. It goes, are you okay, man? And I said, oh, yeah, sure. Last year I'm in a plane crash, and I'm getting hit by fire trucks. I mean, it was funny, but it was horribly, horribly scary. <laughs> Because I didn't know what was going on in my life and why all these things were happening, but the universe was redirecting me. But at the time, I wasn't aware of how. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody back in the 80s was talking about things like they do now in right. 2015. I mean, it, it just was still, quote, in the closet, all this spiritual stuff. And I was being indoctrinated, and there was nobody to help me. It's not like it is today. I was one of the mm -hmm. pioneers, you know. I mean, other people were awakening, but I didn't know where to go find these people. So then that was 82. And in 1984, I was uh, driving home on a rainy night here in Los Angeles. And all the lights were out at this one intersection. And I broadsided a car. We met in the intersection. And as I was spinning out, I just said, oh, God, I just want to go home. And a white light went from the from my head through the ceiling of my car into the heavens and this loud voice that spoke to me while I was coming down the ramp of the plane a few years earlier spoke to me again and gave me a choice to live or die. I said, they, they, they said, you can come with us now or stay. And I was given this message that I don't repeat. And, um, the paramedics came to get me out of my car. And all I did once I got out of the car was say, they want me off the planet. They want me off the planet. Cause I didn't know what was <laughs> happening to me. I didn't understand any of it. It was horribly frightening. It oh, was yeah. very scary. You know, people can laugh and people can think, Oh my God, is this really a true story? Yeah, I've lived it. But each incident took me to a higher level psychically, spiritually, and it was scary because I didn't understand the psychic and spiritual world, especially growing up the way normal people grow up without all this metaphysical stuff. And um, 
I, I took some time to regroup and didn't know where I was headed. And it was a very frightening, frightening time. And then I just started to feel calmer the more I started to pray. And as I started to ask what's going on, I started getting direction and answers. And that's how it all led me into radio because they were there was one station here in town that was looking for a psychic and I was chosen out of 365 people to start the radio psychic show on a K big 104 FM. And that's how psychic radio was born, you mm-hmm. know, long before the internet, this is FM and long before the internet. So I've been doing this for 21 years and a lot of people like yourself on the internet with podcasts and everything, it's a relatively new medium that's really taken off the last five years. So my journey led me to radio and then I had my own show and I did that for many, many years. And now I'm going into TV, as you know, but you know, it's still the journey and it's all because of, of all these weird experiences, starting with the out of body experiences, near death experiences and being totally shocked, overwhelmed and confused, scared for a long time. How often do you think people, have their life changed in this way or develop abilities by uh, tragic events like you experienced? I think a lot of people change psychically and emotionally once they have a trauma in their life. As far as the percentage and statistically, I can't tell you what the numbers are, but uh, I can tell you that the average person doesn't survive a plane crash. Mm -hmm. The average person does not go through three huge NDEs. Mm Mm-hmm near-death experiences, the average person might have one trauma in their life that really shifts their consciousness. But I got hit. It was year after year after year. It just didn't stop. I mean, they really transformed me into a different type of person where I became not just psychic, but I became the healer. Then I became a medium. Um, I had emergency surgery in 91 and in 94. Six, I had about 100 tumors removed from my hips and thighs and became a medium. Wow. Have you been in contact with anybody from any of those experiences, like the plane or? Yeah, I did research on the plane crash Mm -hmm. survivors, and uh, most of them didn't want to hear from me. It was too painful. And I was in touch with about five survivors for a while, and we all lost contact. But that was back in the 80s. And they had actually asked me to stop interviewing and asking questions. But no, there's not a group of people that... uh, network. And and we didn't have Facebook back then. We didn't have right. ways, you know, it was all handwritten letters and phone calls. Right. So, so you work in many different ways and you work in, in different mediums. So kind of tell us a little bit, either as, as a psychic or a medium, how do you, how do you work? And, and when it comes to spirits, because we're giant nerds about that here, how do you communicate with spirits? What do you see in here? Okay, that's a great question. There's three different things that I do, different talents, different gifts. And part of what I do, Patrick, one is being the reader. As a psychic, I hear voices and then I get time frames and I get answers when I'm working as to what's going to happen with money, career, relationships, love, health moving, traveling, education, whatever. And I have um, a really deep gift on telling the timing of an event. Usually psychics can't read time very accurately, but I've been given the gift where I can read the timing. And most of the time, my readings will come in pretty close to when I said it might happen, whether you're selling a house or meeting the guy or girl or whatever's going on in your life. Healing Metaphysical healing is where I take somebody and they're lying down and through breathing color and words, I take them through this little journey and I remove negative emotions that are lodged at the cellular level of our body because that's where pain and emotion live. So by removing the blocks and obstacles, the pain, the grief, the guilt, the shame, the fear, the anxiety, the post-traumatic stress disorder, whatever's going on, and replacing it with love, balance, harmony, unconditional love, passion, and joy. Over time, my healing will slightly transform a person from some of the anger into joy. I just recently had a client of mine who I had healed in 2008 come back from work because he had experienced a traumatic event uh, last year. And with all the different therapies he's gone to, whether talk therapy, chiropractic, healers, or whatever, he wanted to go a little deeper. So he came back to me, and I spoke to him recently, and he said since the healing 
He is less angry. He's more joyful. He feels lighter. And that's why the term enlightenment is important because what a healer or psychic will do is enlighten by removing heavy negative feelings or obstacles. So it all makes sense to lighten up is to let go of burden. And what I do is help people release those burdens that we all carry within us through metaphysical healing. And then the other thing that I do, or the other gift I have, is channeling. And that's where I can tap in on the, on the right side of my brain. Something warm happens when I get the name, the date of birth, and the date of death of a certain individual. I can tap into their spirit on the other side and start communicating messages that I know that the customer or the client can relate to because I don't know where the information comes from other than I cross that third to fourth dimension barrier Mm. and I start hearing things. So there's clairvoyancy, there's clairaudiency, there's clairsentiency used in the readings, the healings, and the channelings. Clairvoyant is seeing, clairaudient is hearing, clairsentient is feeling. And I'm the type that I can't tell you how I do what I do because it happens so quickly. It's like plugging in a plug into a light socket and it just, electrical socket, and it just comes through me. Mm-hmm. I, I do read tarot cards for guides or for guidance. I do pick up information from spirit guides. I don't see the guides, but I hear them. I feel them. I uh, can look at a calendar and go click, 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 dong. And that's when I know something is happening around a person's question. When I'm really in a trance of transmediumship, I have my eyes closed and Words and questions just flow through me. Sometimes people say my my voice changes, my face changes. Sometimes people have seen gold and white halos around me as I channel because I've tapped into this higher energy. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of different things as people witness my work. But for your listener, the majority of my work is done by phone. Or mm. Skype, or Skype. I don't see most people. It's easier for me to read without seeing you. So I'm not influenced by facial expressions or extra questions. I just kind of go with the flow. Interesting. Now, you mentioned tarot cards. Uh, here, um, my listeners tend to be a big fan of spirit communication. And I know that obviously you wouldn't you know require tools but are are you a fan of different tools for spirit communication what's your thoughts on that i am i i started out with tarot cards probably back in 91 just as a tool to see what i was doing because i didn't understand but after i had some surgery on my wrist i didn't need tarot cards anymore because i became so psychic again that the crutch that the cards gave me as an indicator uh, was released from me, and I just start, just like on radio, I just hear a voice and I go for the answer. I mean, I've done two-hour shows, 50 readings in two hours with 18 minutes of commercials each hour. I mean, I've been on, you know, CBS stations, FM stations, AM stations, cable stations, net, uh, internet stations. I've been doing this a long time. I don't need tools. If some people feel they need tools, that's fine. There's different aspects. If there's astrology, numerology, the tarot cards, uh, psychometry, but I just hear a voice and I go. Well, I get it. It would seem silly to use a tool if you didn't need it. You know, I don't need it anymore. I Sometimes I will take out a deck of tarot cards if I am not confident of the answer I'm picking up, and I have a question like I'm sensing something psychically, but there's a glitch or something's not sitting right, and I'm a little confused, and I don't want to give somebody false hope or the wrong answer, and I'll do the best I can. I'm the first psychic that will admit I'm not 100% accurate. Most people will never say that. They're too, you know, prideful. Mm -hmm. But I'm the first to say we're only human. We're not God. We can only shine the light on the path and give options and predictions and insight and especially because i'm very spiritual as well i definitely know there's a god i've seen god i've experienced the light you know and a lot of psychics aren't spiritual and a lot of spiritualists aren't psychic <laughs> there's all you know? kinds <laughs> all kinds around yeah, here right so is it odd or is it god all the woo woo out there and how do you bring it all together you know i i i know you and i have a friend in common named karen dahlman who's mm-hmm. into the ouija board and she and i have sat for 
hours with the Ouija board and we bring in fabulous spirits and, 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 and communication. And I have a friend on the other side who comes through me all the time. My mother comes through. Karen has energies. So there's spirit communication through the Ouija board, not just me being a medium. Um, I can, I, it's not like I walk in a room and say, oh, there's David. He died in 1843 and he's here. I don't do that. I don't do that. I need um, a specific entity where I ask for permission and I go get the person. You know, a mother comes, her son has died, she wants to speak to him, so I communicate with that person. And you always seem to need a birth date. How does that work? I just, it's just something, the tool that I was given or that I used to mm-hmm. tune in, like if the guy was born February 15th, 1982, and died August 16th, 2004. It gives me something to just, okay, let's go find David. Let's go find Bill. So that I'm not bringing in just any entity or any energy that I say, I have this, I have that, or something might give me an indication that I have the right spirit. So I just don't go do a party line and whatever comes through where I'm searching. A lot of people go, oh, I have a red car. There was an accident. There were four people. And if it's in a community or audience situation, you know, five people raise their hand because they all lost somebody in a red car. Mm-hmm. Then the the reader is going on, well, I see one girl and three boys, and then two hands go down because it was all boys or all girls. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, I don't do that. I just get right to David. Yeah. Or Marsha or Susie or whoever's on the other <laughs> side. The dog, the poodle, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I try to make light of it. I really do because it's so sad and it's so difficult. And grief is one of the most painful things any of us will ever go through. When I lost my mother, and it's going to be six years, but I lost my mother in uh, 2009. And the pain and the grief, as much as I have done grief counseling and helped people through the years, it was nothing like what I experienced on my own where I could mm. really identify with my clients coming to me for help because of the pain but for a while, I stopped channeling because I was afraid I was going to bring in my mom and I wasn't sure if I could or not. And there's oh, times yeah. I hear her. It was weird. And one of my clients in Colorado, her son had committed suicide a year before my mother passed. And she called a couple of months after my mom passed. I said, oh, I can't channel anymore. And all of a sudden, her son came through. So she called me. And I guess that was to let me know that my gift was still there. But my fear, my own fear got in the way. And it helped me to cope. And unfortunately, and I'm not saying this out of ego, Patrick, and I want you to know this, but... I have yet to meet a medium who's as descriptive and accurate as I am because I get details. And I've gone to mediums that kind of hit and miss when I asked them to channel my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, okay. But it's a difficult task. I don't believe that you can take a class to learn. I don't believe you can enhance your gift. Everybody's trying to teach the next person to be a psychic, a healer, and a medium. Mm-hmm. We all have certain gifts. But if everybody were supposed to be a psychic healer or medium on the planet, who's going to be the doctors, the talk show hosts, the trash collectors, the market supervisors, the CPAs, and everything else? We all have spiritual sides, but not everybody's supposed to go to that insane level of psychic medium and healing abilities. You can't. It'd be too much imbalance on the planet. It's an interesting way of looking at it. You know, you can't, everybody's trying, everybody thinks they've got the gift. I cannot tell you how many times people call, oh, I'm psychic. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, and I'll test them. I say, well, can you do this? Can you pick up on that? What about with your brother? What about your your mom or your friends? No, no, no. I said, you're not psychic. You might be intuitive. Mm -hmm. They confuse psychic abilities with intuition. We all have intuition. We all have that sixth self, sixth sense of self. And the more we talk to God, the more we're going to hear it through prayer and meditation. Prayer is talking to God and meditating is listening for the message. Mm -hmm. But not everybody has been open to the channel to become a channel, to become a medium. It's not a happy life at times. It's a very lonely, painful way to be because a lot of people don't understand us and a lot of people can't relate. Or I will talk to somebody and their consciousness level is so novice like a novice it's 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 different and i think you having this interest in the paranormal and your own gifts 
you may experience, especially through the guests that you have, that you can't relate to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, some people you know you're above and some you're below and some you're equal to, and that's true of anybody out there. But as a psychic spiritualist, it's a whole different level of consciousness, energy, and awareness. The goal is for people to grow into this awareness, but not everybody's ready to open. Yeah, it's a big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a challenge. Transition, I guess, and some people are further along in the transition or or enlightenment, I guess, is probably the better word. That's right. Absolutely. So when it comes to your readings, Mm -hmm. I, I, I can make a guess here, but what is like the most popular question? that you tend to get all the time. What about my love life? (laughs) That's what I was going to get. What about my love life? Am I ever going to meet anybody? Is this my soulmate? Does he really love me? Does she really care for me? Is it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When are they going to call? Am I going to get married? Have I met the right person? How do I know their feelings? It's always about love life. And Sylvia Brown, before she passed away years ago on Larry King, had said it could be the end of the world at midnight. And people at five to midnight are still going to call and say, am I going to meet anybody in the next five minutes? (laughs) It's always about the love life. (laughs) That's funny. Gay, straight, bi, transgender. It doesn't matter sexual orientation. The heart and the soul of a human being wants to be cared for, loved, unified, and partnered. And know when it's going to (laughs) happen. Exactly. And it's the hardest thing to predict. It's the hardest thing to predict because people have free will. We have free choice. I've come into meeting the men that have been predicted. And when they, before I understood psychic predictions and it started to happen, I ran. I got scared. So free will stood in the way and changed and altered the destiny. So I can make a prediction. People call back, well, this didn't happen and that didn't happen. I'm like, well, did you do this or that? Well, I met this one guy, but he didn't like that. I said, you chose free will. It, uh, the event came into your world, but you decided not to go forward or he had free will and turned the corner. Mm-hmm. We can come into these landmarks and things can be there at the wide of the road. But do we go forward or do we get scared? Do they have free will? Because they're scared. They don't understand the intensity of the feeling. So they back away and run from it. Or you become comfortable and curious and courageous to walk through it. A lot of people just go on energy. Some people go on chemistry. Some people go by fate. Some people want to know in advance. So if you're going to ask a psychic, like it says in my bio, if you don't want to know, don't ask. (laughs) (laughs) If you don't want to know when it's going to happen and it starts to happen and you run away from it, then what do you want to know for in the first place, right? Which is funny because as I listen to some of your readings and your appearances with other psychics, some of the first things you'll hear after you give them the answer is, but, but, but. (laughs) (laughs) I noticed that. I think that's funny. Yeah. They always want to um, defray the whole situation or say, yeah, but he did this and he did that. And I'll say, yeah, but this is what's really going on. Yeah. You're talking about me talking to some of the customers or callers on my radio show Mm -hmm. (laughs) when they count for a psychic reading. Like I give the reading and then they want to. They want to counteract it. Yeah, but I was like, no, not, no, yeah, but, you know, this is how it looks. And then, you know, three, six months later, they call back, you're not going to believe this. I said, try me, you know, because it happened. (laughs) Now, I asked this question to a past guest who does similar work and talks to a lot of folks on air. And that question is, do you ever get questions that just make you want to say, you know, oh, my God, stop whining. I can't help you. And you just want to poke your eyes out. Patrick, yes. That's (laughs) when I usually come back, say they don't need a psychic, they need a shrink. (laughs) Because some questions are so stupid. Some questions are just stupid. A lot of psychic work is common sense. Yeah. But a lot of people, believe it or not, lack common sense. A lot of people are more um, ignorant, or a lot of people are just not as aware as they could be. And a lot of people really are lost in the dark. So 
I can't bring up a situation right now of something that's just so stupid. Like, oh, I remember one time I was on the radio and this girl calls in and wants to know if, her, if she needs to take her car in for an oil change. I said, I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> I'm not a mechanic. I'm a psychic. You don't need a psychic to ask about your car. Go to the mechanic. <laughs> you know, do I, do I have a, a vaginal infection? I don't know. Go to the gynecologist. <laughs> They will come to me. Am I pregnant? Take a pregnancy test. Oh. I don't know. So there's those kind of questions that will make, I will sit there and I'll be cracking up or going, what the hell is this? And then you get the real questions. My son died. Yeah. I'd like to communicate with him. First thing I think, oh, I see he hung himself. Yes, he committed suicide. Okay, I've got this, this, and that. Or... um, my husband just lost his job. Is he going to get another job? When am I going to meet somebody? Oh, I've been talking to this guy since December. We spent New Year's together. I haven't heard from him. What happened? I'm still married, but I'm dating. How come I haven't met anybody? Because you're still married. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's you're legally and spiritually married. It's not going to bring in a new lover for you. It's, they're just not going to take you seriously. You know, the, the, I've been doing this for 21 years. It's I, I cannot possibly in an hour tell you the thousands of readings I've had and done, private clients on the air, the, the phenomenal gratification I get in helping somebody, healing somebody, channeling for somebody. The letters, the book I'm writing has a lot to do with my background opening up and about 25 stories of channeling communicating mm -hmm. with the other side where I have testimony, written testimony from my clients, and I'm going to put it in a book because there's not enough of that out there. There's some illusion as to how it all works, but the real testimony hasn't really come through. Yeah. So I, I, I want to take a uh, quick break to give a reading to someone who is really excited to send in a question to you, and then I want to talk about something I know you get excited to talk about, is that is your candles. Wicks so, of wisdom. Oh yes. So let's uh, let's take this call. I'm going to say a call, but really it's just audio, and we'll listen to that and then see if you have any thoughts. Okay. Hello, Dr. Salvin. My name is Michelle, and I was born April second, nineteen fifty-two. I've been a widow for eight years now, and I met a man on Christmas Eve of last year. And I'm wondering if you can tell me if a relationship will develop with him. And if not, is there going to be anyone in my life in 2015? All right. So um, what do you think about that question? Well, my first impression is that Michelle will be meeting somebody and remarrying, but I'm still looking at about two to three years down the road before she really connects with that. She'll have a long-term relationship. This year around August, September, October, it feels like she'll be coming into a dating situation that could have some longevity around it. She's she's still, I don't want to say she's still grieving, but she still misses the good time she had with her husband, and she's looking for somebody comparable, and it takes time. A lot of the what she's going through is still a soul evolution as to the grief, the healing, and the moving forward. Everybody wants their partner. Everybody wants to have a new companion. She will remarry. She will, but I just oh, okay. can't see exactly when. But I'm going to say more towards summertime of this year, she should be coming into more of a dating relationship cycle. And that's where I would also suggest if she wants to expedite that process, we get her into the soulmate power track candles, which we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about because I get people married with those candles. So wow. if she really wants her true soulmate and really wants to go into dating and really get serious about it. That's where I come in to help. Well, I can't wait for this person to hear your response. Okay. Well, let me know what she says or have her contact me. Cool. I will. Okay, so I'm breaking in for just a second. Linda wanted to make sure you knew that this reading from my friend Michelle was just a sample of how she does readings on the air. But she does 30, 40, and 60-minute sessions privately. If you're interested in a reading, call 1-888-509-1077. Or you can go to lindasalvin.com. All right, back to the interview. All right, so let's talk candles. 
Wix of Wisdom is a spiritual candle line I created in 1999 to help people achieve more of what they want in their lives. After doing several readings on the air and in private practice, I realized people wanted more than just answers. So Wix of Wisdom is based on old ancient candle magic theory, whether it's pagan, Wicca, Santeria. Everybody uses oils and herbs and candles and um, some use the elements like wind, earth, fire, water, some use prayer, some use design. With Wicks of Wisdom, I use candles, essential oils, a combination of various herbs, and then there's some powders. And if you take a candle, a seven-day candle, like the novenas you see at a gravesite or something when people are honoring somebody, or the ones, the seven-day candles that just burn, those are the candles we use and you put the oils and the herbs and the powders into the candle, the candle represents the body of man. The wick represents the soul of man. God said, let there be light. So the flame is God. So there's this piece of paper on parchment that we fill out and we put certain petitions down, and I don't explain all of it on the radio because I can't give it all away. And it gets burned in the flame. So the universal consciousness goes out and creates the magic using aroma, using the essential oils, using the powders. You're giving offerings to the gods. You're, 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 you're asking for something and giving something in return at the same time. Each candle burns three to seven days. There's three candles per set. So you do all three candles to create the ritual. And if you think of cooking, Say you're baking chocolate chip cookies, a lasagna, and making a Caesar salad. You've got all these different ingredients and recipes, and you come up with three different dishes. It's the same thing with my candles. You have different formulas of oil, herbs, and powders that create the effect I have money and success power to help open doors for new money, raises, promotions, getting money that people owe you, passing exams, uh, accelerating in school or whatever, or opening doors for relationships. I have good luck power to remove blocks, obstacles, negativity, curses, and hexes that people feel are on them to release that heavy black cloud. I have two sets of uh, love candles. The first one is Soulmate Power Attract, where you're attracting new love, companions, or friends. And the other is Soulmate Power Love, which enhances what's already there in a partnership. So it'd be more intimacy, more sex, more communication, more affection, or whatever needs to go on as a result of burning these candles. And then I have uh, health and wellness power, which enhances the immune system. I've had people get rid of cancer. I've had people get pregnant. I've had people get rid of a spot on their lung. There's been some magical testimony through the years. And it's all by following the directions I give you the ingredients, you do the work. I do do the work for certain people like pilots and celebrities and people that can't burn candles in their home for a special fee. I'll do the work for them. But um, usually you become your own alchemist using the tools and the ingredients that I give you and you go through your own process and things will start happening. It, it, It works. It's powerful. And the trademark that I have is like a prescription for your soul. So somebody comes to me, they have a reading. I say, oh, you would benefit most from soulmate power and good luck power in your situation or whatever I see. I also have candles for legal problems and I've helped people win lawsuits. I've had people um, do about eight sets of soulmate power and end up getting married. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the testimonies are, are endless. There's an infomercial on YouTube that was on TV back in 08 and 09, and you can Google Wix of Wisdom and go watch that. All the people in the show, except for Kris Jenner, the Kardashian's mother, were all my clients, and they're real testimony. Uh, People can find out about it at lindasalvin.com under Wix of Wisdom. And um, it's a beautiful page. I mean, you can find all kinds of information about the candles. Thank you. Thank you. If it didn't work or I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't sell it. I'm not a charlatan. Um, I'm highly educated, as you know. I work very hard. It is a business. 
it just happens to be in the occult or the spiritual world where most people go woo woo or you're doing the work of the devil or you know they don't understand <laughs> how esoteric energy can be applied to their own life but is it odd or is it God? You know, I mean, what creates magic? It's the elements and all of it. You can't explain why it changes energy, but it's all in the light. This is not spell work. It's like somebody wants to get the guy. Well, you do the soulmate power, love, but it doesn't mean he's under a spell like, oh my God, Amy, I'm in love with you. That's not what's going to happen. It doesn't work like that at all. <laughs> you know, he's not mesmerized. Oh my God, I'm so in love with you. No, it's very subtle energy that he might start to feel the ting like, I want to call her. I can't get her off my mind. But you keep doing it or like with, the, uh, this, like with your friend. With Michelle, mm -hmm. um, I would have her do soulmate power attract and start bringing in the right soulmates for her. And she will. She'll get the right person. She will. This petition thing is really cool. And when someone buys a set, they're going to get the information about that? Absolutely. They, they get the parchment paper. They get a little spoon to divide up the powders. You get the oils. You get four bottles of oil or in the love, you get one big bottle. Everything's divided into thirds for the three candles. It's all explained in the CD and the booklet that comes with it, along with some gemstones that I give as a gift. Very cool. I recently asked my friend and psychic medium, Chip Coffee. Mm -hmm. As a psychic medium, what question do you wish you would get asked in interviews, but never get asked? And here's what he came back with. He said, I should ask, what do you enjoy doing when you are not working as a psychic? I saw that on your Facebook. I was yeah, and would you agree with him? Yes, because people think all we are are psychics. I like going to baseball games, football games. I like going to Super Bowl parties. I like going to concerts. Last night I was at the theater and I saw um, a dance movement of a spiritual dance troupe out of New York here in Los Angeles. I go to movies. I play guitar. I write. I, I'm a foodie. I go out to eat a lot. I mean, I have a life. Awesome. You know, um, I have a crush on somebody right now, so I even may have a love life. I'm burning <laughs> candles, okay? I am human. We are human beings. You know, we're being human in our existence. Just because I'm psychic, what would you ask an attorney? What would you ask your hairdresser? What would you ask your manicurist? What would you ask your doctor? Besides work, what do you do? Well, life. That's Why great. do people think that we're just... Psychic. <laughs> you know, I, I go to a movie. I watch the Academy Awards. I'm no different than you. I just happen to have higher conscious abilities and a gift to see or feel things that the average person doesn't. Are you going to ask your psychiatrist what do they do if they're not working? Of course, he's going to go to a ball game. Or he's going to go out to dinner with his wife or he's going to go skiing. I mean, he lives, he does something, goes on vacation, goes to Hawaii. I don't know. Or maybe visits another psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, because he needs help in letting go of all the negativity driving him nuts. A psychic needs a psychic. A healer needs a healer. <laughs> Now, I am dying to know what you can tell <laughs> us about this new TV show that I keep seeing stuff about. Is there anything you can tell us? Yes, I can tell you minimally that there's a new cable network being launched on cable TV here in Southern California that is not going to be nationwide yet, but it's like an HBO or an OWN or a Showtime or any other cable system that's starting in Southern California. My show was one of 72 shows that were chosen out of 500 pitches to start on this new network. It's going to also be on the internet. I cannot tell you yet what it is or where it is because we just finished filming uh, six episodes. I'm going to have 12 to start for the pilot season. And as I learn more about the growth of that, then I can tell you more. But I am not at liberty to give you the name of the network or where you can find it yet. I, I, I'm not allowed to. But I have been chosen. But I'm excited about that. How cool. Thank you. It is a talk show based on my radio show, interviewing people with metaphysical experiences, whether one's a shaman or one's in the film industry, but it happens to be metaphysical, or somebody who's had all the readings, healings, and work with me with the candles came on to give testimony and her opinion about God and spirituality. Another one was an astrologer. Another one does... Um, 
EVP, which is electronic voice phenomena, you know, things like that. Very cool. I can't wait. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I find out. I'll be posting it on Facebook and people can join my newsletter list at lindasalvin.com and get updates there as well. Wonderful. Well, give us any other information we need to know about finding you. And I know there's a phone number that that we need to share so that people can con- contact you that way. Yeah, I would love it. You could visit lindasalvin.com, L-I-N-D-A-S-A-L-V-I-N.com, or just call my toll-free number, which is 888-509-1077. Leave a message and I'll get back with you to book your reading, healing, channeling, or take your order for candles. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to come right out and beg. Would you consider sharing this episode on Facebook, tweeting it on Twitter, pinning it on Pinterest, and whatever other Coolio social media platforms are out there? Even if it's not this episode, perhaps you have another favorite. If you shared it, you would really be helping me to reach more paranerds out there. You know what else you could do? Are you ready for this? Find a friend and say, what's your favorite podcast? What? You don't listen to podcasts? You have an iPhone, don't you? Look, you have a podcast app. Let me show you. Oh, look, I accidentally subscribed you to the Big Seance Podcast. I dare you. Come on, you know you want to do it. And you might get smacked, but then at least you could call me and tell me about it. (laughs) Have a great week. See you next time. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit BigSeance.com, now the home of both the blog and the podcast. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Do you have any comments or feedback? Please contact me at Patrick at BigSeance.com. You can call my feedback line at 77 77- 55 tell me that's 775 775- 583-5563. You can also record audio feedback right from the site using the SpeakPipe link included in the show notes. I could decide to include your voice in a future show. Thank you so much for listening and reading. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out, but we'll see you and light them again next time. Do I do I have a, a vaginal infection? I don't know. Go to the gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs>